We have to go through a mighty, mighty shaking situation before we can see Jesus for who he really is. This would shake Abraham to the core. Out of his hundred and something years, he would never be able to know or even see God, see the Lord like he would right in this situation. <clears throat> this event in his life would cause him to look 1,900 years into the future and actually see Jesus Christ. Because Jesus would say this in John 58, that Abraham had seen my day when he was talking to the Pharisees, and he rejoiced in seeing my day. And they thought he was crazy. But you see right there on the third day, on the third day, he saw the glory of Jesus Christ rising from the dead mm. on the third day. The Bible don't say nothing for, you know, it just don't write a word for nothing. Every single word in the Word of God means something. Mm -hmm. So when he says third day, that's what he's talking about. And Abraham looked by faith and seen the glory of what Jesus Christ would do for all humanity. Praise God. Can you look past your situation? Like Abraham looked past, he could have, I know he was anxious. I know he had fear. I know he was scared because he, he had to follow God's instruction. But this is his son he loved. What's it going to look like? Put a knife through his chest. This looks horrible. I know he was, he was fretting. But yet he looked past all that. He looked past his emotions. He looked past his feelings. And he said, I see God providing the sacrifice. I see Jehovah Jireh, my provider. Mm -hmm. I see 1,900 years in the future. I see, can you see that far? Or do you got your blinders on? Many times when we got our blinders on, all we see is our situation right now, and we're going crazy in it. And it's driving us nuts. But can you see by faith the Lord providing a way out of that situation? That's why he's called the father of faith. He wasn't perfect. None of us will be perfect, but if you live by faith, you see further than your situation. Amen. Praise God. Man, it's quiet out there. This is exciting stuff. Amen. It's time to wake up, man. Get your spiritual coffee. Come on now. Jesus paid your debt. Oh. Amen. It should be us yep. on that altar, on that cross. Amen. And Abraham said unto his young men, Abide you here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship, and come again unto you. That's how I know. That's how I know that he's seen afar off. And not only did Jesus say it, but that he's seen that Jesus was the way. Because he said, we'll be back. Mm -hmm. Now God just said, go sacrifice your son. He said, yeah, we're coming back. <laughs> That means he knew that even if the Lord allowed him to go through with this thing, that he would raise him from the dead, as it says in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. The supernatural. Before there was the apostles and the Holy Spirit and the book of Acts and all the supernatural works. Before the Gospels where Jesus walked on the water. Before all these things that we read and know to be true, Abraham stepped out by faith and believed it was going to happen anyway. Y'all see that? We get to read about it. We get the Holy Spirit to reveal it to our hearts. We get to see this is real and believe it. And when we pray, it happens today because we believe it because we heard it. This man ain't, hadn't seen that stuff. He hadn't heard of anybody raising from the dead, but he counted him faithful. Man, that's what I'm talking about. Think about that. That is an amazing revelation. That Abraham would believe that his son would come back from the dead. No one's ever come back from the dead. Not in Abraham's time. Hello? Enoch was translated. <laughs> but he didn't come back from the dead. But Abraham believed. Can you believe with that unwavering faith what the Word of God says? He believed the instruction of God and he knew Moriah meant that God would provide. So he knew that the Lord would provide a way out in his situation. Do you know the Lord will provide a way out in your situation? Even my stuttering situation. He'll provide a way out. And Jesus says, I am that way, that truth, and that life. What is it that you're dealing with this morning that you think is all over with? Because the devil would lie to you and tell you to give up. Give up. Stop. Quit. Back off. Don't come to church. And you might as well just kill yourself. 
That's going around big time right now. Because mm -hmm. people are losing hope. They're actually, actually losing faith. Because faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things unseen. Just because you can't see it doesn't mean he hasn't provided the way. This man knew. He's shown us this one reason why he prepared Abraham for this test and he's prepared each one of us for tests because there's coming a day and an hour in Revelation chapter 310 where I said he told the church of Philadelphia there's a test coming upon the whole world. All the world is about to go through a test and a trial. And he says, I'll keep you. I'll keep you because you have kept because you have kept obedience. You have kept my obedience. You have loved me, so I'll keep you. He will keep you through the test that's coming. There's a test coming, people. I'm serious. Man, I'm telling you. There's things happening right now that's never happened before in history. And the test is going to be upon everybody's heart. And that's when he's trying to prepare you and put that love inside of you and increase that love inside of you that you'll love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, and soul and that you'll love others as yourself. Oh, here we go. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 6, And Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and the knife, and they went, both of them, together. And Isaac spoke unto Abraham, his father, and said, My father. And he said, Here I am, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. So they went, both of them, together. Do you realize how strong this is? Because, I'm going to tell you, right now, if, if my grown daddy back there pulled me up on a hilltop over here pressing, <laughs> and, and, and I had to carry the wood, and there was a knife, and there was some fire, and I got, he got that look in his eye, you know? <laughs> I might not be taken, but I sure try. <laughs> Isaac didn't run. <laughs> Isaac did not run. He knew that what that stood for. He would carry that wood as Jesus would carry the cross on Golgotha Hill. The same, the same mountain that Jesus was crucified on, Mount Moriah. The same mountain that Solomon would build the temple on, 2 Chronicles 3. He built the temple. And they would offer hundreds of sacrifices for hundreds of years. Right there at the temple mount. This is the same mount. Isaac would carry that wood as Christ carried his wood. The fire would be the judgment of God. He knew that a burnt offering stood for redemption of sin. <coughs> that the Lamb of God would be slain. He was taught that by his father Abraham. So he knew, okay, something's happening here. But yet he still was obedient to stay there. Why? Because he had a love for his father. And not only that, he had a love mankind. You say, why? With him knowing this and him knowing that the seed would come, that the Messiah would come, and here it is now looking like he may be the one, knowing he, he wasn't perfect, but he knew, uh-oh, this looks like I'm going to be the one to be sacrificed. Because it was in Sarah's, see, Sarah's seed, it would be through Sarah